Hi, and welcome to my channel. Or if you're a returning subscriber, hi again. It's so nice to see you back here for another video. My name is Tess Lark, and today I'm going to show you how you can create a textured pattern using epoxy resin and mica powder. As always, I'll have all the materials that I use for this project linked in the description down below. So if anybody's interested, all of that information will be down there for you. And let's just hop into today's project. I'm working on a couple different projects today, so I do have a big batch of resin mixed up, but this particular mold holds about 150 milliliters of resin total. However, I'm going to be pouring this tray in two separate layers and letting it cure in between, so I'm going to start by pouring just roughly 100 milliliters of clear resin. Before I pour my resin though, I do like to use a piece of duct tape to clean out any dust or pet hair that may be hanging out inside my molds. I also store them in little Ziploc bags or the original bags that they came in in between use for the same reason. Once I'm sure that my mold is clean, I'll begin to pour in my resin. And I like to pour it from a high, slow stream and this allows some of the air bubbles to pop on the way down. I want to pour enough resin in there that I've got a nice even layer across the top of it and so that that outside lip is completely filled in. My next step will be to use my heat gun to pop any air bubbles that I can see forming on the surface and I'll also use a popsicle stick to go around that deep outer lip just to make sure I can get some of those air bubbles up closer to the surface where I can easily pop them with my heat gun. And just a quick reminder and a little shameless plug that if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give the like button a little boop. It not only helps me out a whole lot, it also lets me know that I'm making content that you guys wanna see for me. Once I've gotten the air bubbles out, my next step is gonna to be to lay down a clear piece of saran wrap flat right over the top of that resin. And if you find that you make some bubbles as you're going, you can kind of lift up the saran wrap and use your heat gun to pop any of those bubbles and if it's just too many bubbles too far gone you can always use a fresh piece of clean wrap but now that I have that down I'm just going to go around with a pair of scissors and cut off some of that excess plastic when you're doing this just be careful because the resin is still really liquidy so the saran wrap will move around quite a bit and you don't want to get resin on your scissors especially if they are um, new and I would also suggest using craft scissors just in case you do get resin on them you don't want to be using your kitchen scissors. Once I've cut off a bit of that excess saran wrap I'm going to use my fingers to gently pinch the saran wrap and the resin together to create a textured effect. And I know I don't have to remind you but I should just point it out because I do gear a lot of my resin art tutorials at beginning resin artists or beginner resin artists and I just want to remind you guys that you should always be wearing gloves whenever you're working with resin. You definitely don't want to get resin on your bare skin and also make sure you're using something like like a silicone mat or even wax paper to protect your desk. And also leave me a comment saying obviously if you already knew that. Okay, back to our project. Once I'm happy with how the texture is looking, I'm going to go ahead and let this resin cure completely. So I'll leave it alone and let it set for between 12 and 24 hours, depending on the resin you're using. So we're just jumping forward in time a little bit here. And now that the resin's cured, I'm going to pull up all of that saran wrap. I've got another video here where I leave the saran wrap on, and I'll go ahead and link that one down in the description if you guys are curious. I don't really think it makes that big of a difference, to be honest, whether or not you leave the saran wrap on. But let me know in the comments below, have you tried this? before? Do you leave the saran wrap on? Do you take it off? Let me know. I'm also using my fingers here and a pair of scissors to kind of cut and get rid of any little jagged edge that might be a little bit over the edge of my mold. My next step is going to be to add some color to this piece and to do that I'm using some mica powder by Arteza. It is their color light plum and once again I will have everything linked in the description down below so if you're curious about the resin I'm using or the pigments that I'm using I'll have links for all of that in the description. I'm starting out by sprinkling a little bit of that mica powder down and then using a paintbrush I'm just going to cover that entire piece with my mica powder making sure that I'm working all of that pigment in all of those little nooks and crevices that I created when I made that textured pattern and I've been fairly obsessed with this pink color lately oh hi kitty close says hi but you can obviously use any color you want. I also decided to add a little bit of this color changing mica powder to Let's Resin just to give the piece a little bit more depth and dimension. But I also think that this technique and piece could look really cool with like a color fade or a different gradient or even using like two or three different tones in one piece. I think could have really beautiful end results. 
but I'm really making sure to press that powder into the edges and go right up along the corner of my mold as well because I do want to have it nice and evenly coated with pigment. And let me know in the comments below, is there a color that you're loving right now? Is there a specific brand of pigments that you've been using with resin that you think works really well? I really love it when you guys turn me on to new techniques and new products. So let me know what you're using and let me know what you're loving. Now that I've got my piece pretty well coated, I'm going to use my hands to gently tap on the edges of the mold to get all of this loose powder to coat the piece. It's okay if I do have a little bit of loose powder in there, but I'm going to tap this and also use my paintbrush just to kind of push that pigment around so I don't have any large chunks of mica powder in the mold. Also, I was looking at my analytics recently and it's only about 10% of people who watch my videos that are subscribed to this channel. So if you do like my content and you do like my videos, can you please make sure that you're subscribed? This channel is really close to hitting 4,000 subscribers and both my cat Poe and I would love to see us get there. All right, and I mixed up another 100 milliliters of clear resin off camera just to save a little time in this video. And I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun before I add some pigment to that as well. And today I'm gonna be using some more mica powder by Arteza. It is their color noir, so it's just their black. It's kind of a silvery black color. And I'm gonna add some of that into my resin and then I'll be using my popsicle stick to mix that pigment into my resin. And the general rule of thumb when you're mixing resin and pigment together is that you want to keep it about 90% resin to 10% pigment, any more than that and you may have problems when it comes to curing. And a good way to gauge how pigmented your resin is to check and see how it looks on the end of your popsicle stick. For this particular project, it's alright if my resin is still just a little bit translucent because I will be pouring quite a bit of it into my piece and so once it's sort of built up like that, it's going to be much more opaque. Now that I've got my resin pigmented, I'm gonna go ahead and use that black resin to fill up the remainder of the mold. And the resin is quite viscous, so you wanna work a little slowly because you don't wanna overfill your mold. I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and right up to the edge. And because there are a couple little jagged pieces from the texture that we made earlier, I'm going to use my popsicle stick just to make sure that that resin gets in all of those little nooks and crannies. And then after a quick hit from my heat gun, again to pop any of those little surface bubbles, I'm going to allow this piece to cure completely before removing it from the mold. All right, so I went ahead and I let this piece set up overnight. It's nice and solid, totally cured. So let's go ahead and pop it out of the mold and just see how it turned out. Wow, you guys. And so you can see we have all of this beautiful texture. And I can definitely see where I use that two-tone pigment in there. And it is such a beautiful color when it mixes with the magenta that we used in this piece as well. As always, I'll make sure to get some footage of this in the natural light so you can see it a little bit better. But the colors are so pretty and this textured pattern is really, really stunning as well. Overall, I'm super happy with this piece. All I'm gonna do to finish it up now is use my rotary tool to sand down the edges a little bit because I did get a little bit of a sharp edge in a couple places. So I'll sand this down and throw some rubber bumpers onto the back of it and then it'll be ready to list on my Etsy shop, which I'll go ahead and link down below if you're curious. It's a great way to support my art and this channel. I seriously can't get over these colors. It's so, so pretty. As always, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me, especially if you made it to this point in the video. And if you did make it this far, leave me some sort of flower emoji just so that I know that you made it. And if you want to see more resin art tutorials from me, check out this next video here, and I'll see you soon. Bye!